So this is a, a video I'm making uh, about, it's like my uh, suicide prevention video uh, number two. Um, I wanted to say that uh, we all get depressed and we all want to give up at times. Um, there's uh, some people will kill themselves and a lot of people that are seeking death will kill themselves. You know, the, the people that are seeking peace and uh, it's up to you whether or not, and I mean the person that's, that's going to kill themselves or attempting whatever happens. It's up to you to make your life better and it's not going to be easy. It's, it's never easy, you know, um, to, to get, pick yourself up. Um, I noticed that, um, years ago when I was in my twenties, I had, I would crash really, really hard and, and I would get, uh, I'd get severe depression and I would get triggered. If you want to use that word, I know it's kind of overused lately, you know, in the, everywhere is triggered, you know, but, um, what I'm getting at is like, uh, it would trigger me, uh, my depression and, uh, because of, I would drink a ton of caffeine and then when I come off it, I'd crash and then that would trigger me to get severe depression and it would start going. So then I would drink more and more and more and, uh, it, it became to where it was just exhausting, you know, and, uh, just to keep fighting, to keep moving forward. And, uh, I would work out every day to kind of boost my testosterone. I would take B vitamins and, uh, amino acids to try to level myself out. And to be honest with you, it worked really, really well. I found that eating a keto diet actually got rid of, uh, my depression. I, I don't think I had any depression for like three years, three and a half years, something like that. Um, uh, I mean, just, you know, how, uh, people that are depressed just get depressed, you know, they, they, and sometimes they can't put their finger on it exactly, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> well with the keto diet, I, I, it was extremely rare, so rare that I don't even know if I had depression around that three years, um, three and a half years. I, I really felt really, really freaking good. And, uh, I surround myself. I do different things though. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm still working. I go do things like that, of course, and to have a living, you know, um, but I also go out in the sun. It doesn't matter in Wyoming out here, man. I mean, our weather, you never know what you're going to get with weather. It could be a nice day or it could be a crappy day, but I always get outside and get air. You know, I get the air, the fresh air. I get as much sunlight as I can get. Um, and uh, I go for a hike, a walk, you know, uh, I might just walk around the block, but typically, you know, I walk up in the hills, I'm hiking up through the hills and I go sit on the, I go stand on the very top of the mountains or we're in my area, you know, and look around out, out at the, uh, out at everything. And that seemed to help uh, tremendously, you know, get rid of uh, depression. And um, sometimes people, um, and I think it, because, you know, we're kind of a, we're smart apes, you know, in a sense. So what we do is we have an obsession over things. And so whether someone said something rude to us or, you know, uh, it's something that we noticed about ourselves that we don't like. And instead of, and, and we obsess over the actual, uh, moment of, what caused our, our issue, you know, our stress or we're like, Oh man, Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Or I can't believe this. I can't believe that. And you'll obsess over that and then you'll want to kill yourself. So you can't, you know, and I mean, that's just some of the people, some of the people are also other people are just, you know, they've made bad choices. And so they've built themselves up, built a bad, bad around their whole life. And so they're like, Oh my God, it's just too much to start over. I don't want to start over. I'm X, X amount of years old and I'm, I am, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I don't want to do it no more. And so they'll end it. Um, 
I've been uh, going, I've been just kind of hearing a lot of stories with my, my brother-in-law and the things that he's went, he's gone through, you know, um, he was in the military and, um, you know, the people that he was, he was, he was, uh, you know, his married, married life, you know, and, and, uh, the mental abuse that he dealt with there and the, uh, you know, and her cheating on him all the time. And then, you know, he ended up, you know, just feeling like things were not going to work out. And there was, there was more to the story, obviously, um, stuff that I don't know about. And, uh, he felt exhausted, you know, it kind of seemed that that's what it was all about is he was just like, dude, I'm tired. I don't want to do it no more. And, uh, the unfortunate thing is we all have more in us than you think, you know, and then, then they think, then, and we all have that. We all get tired. We all want to give up, but you have to train your brain and you have to wire yourself a certain way. Like when stuff gets difficult, make it better, you know, go after it to fix your problem, make it up here to where it's a challenge. Well, I'm going to do it. And then when I do it, I'm going to celebrate. It might take me 20 years, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to celebrate. This is how I'm going to celebrate when I get to that point. And you have to, um, you have to have that mentality and, uh, everybody goes through different things. And I've had a lot of friends kill themselves in the last couple of years um, and, uh, more of them were military than not. And, uh, a lot of it was physical pain. You know, they were going through a lot of physical pain from their injuries. Uh, I know there's a lot of anguish, a lot of, um, sadness inside people, you know, um, I know a lot of people have seen the world and they, you know, they're like, there's no, I, no matter what I do, I'm always going to see that, that evil or that sadness. I won't be able to get away from it, but you have to learn to look at the world differently than what you saw it originally. I mean, a young man and an old man, the same guy, it, no matter whether they go in the military or they don't their mind is going to see things differently as they get older. You know, you take a guy that was in his twenties and he was in Vietnam and then he's in his sixties or seventies. Now he's not going to think the same way. I mean, he still might have the same, he might, he might feel the same about some things, but, or a lot of it, but you're still going to change certain things in your mind. And, you know, I imagine that, every one of them that are still alive are glad that they're still alive, that they moved forward and had a family and kept going. And life is a terrible, sad, but wonderful and well worth, well worth it. Just keep going, keep moving forward, you know, be the root in the tree it pushes and, and there's gonna, there's always objects in your way, you know, there's always objects, you know, and you're gonna, you're gonna have to push through rock and foundation and dirt, you know, things are going to be on top of you and all around you and putting pressure on you and you're going to have to fight and it's a slow fight and you're just going to keep pushing. And then all of a sudden you'll get to that point where <clears throat> you get the reward and that's, there is rewards out there. There are rewards everywhere. You just got to look at a lot of people don't realize that they have blessings. And I hate to say blessings because I'm not a Christian. I'm not, I'm not a, a follower of any religion, but it, and I don't mean it like a spiritual or a religious way. I mean like a blessing or a, a prize, a, uh, you know, something that is like, wow, you know, I got this, this is a treasure. This is something that, that, that I have gotten in that. And that might be like, you know, because I stayed here, 
you know, I have, you know, I have a child now and he has a child or she has a child and they ran up to me and they, you know, they called me Papa or they ran up and called me Granny and they, you know, and <clears throat> they smile at me and look me in the eyes, you know, things like that. That's a treasure, you know, that's something that you, you'll never know unless you, unless you wait it out. And, uh, we're not all good people, but it doesn't mean that we can't be striving to be a better person every day. I know some of us have a darkness inside, <clears throat> excuse me. And some of us have, you know, like some of us have more light than other people, you know, too. Um, there's some really, really kind, loving people out there. And then there's some really mean, monstrous type people. And we should all strive to be a better person for ourselves and for others. And, um, I don't mean just be better for others, like as in, you know, your family and friends. I mean, in general, you know, you see somebody that's, you know, that needs something, you know, give them a little bit, give them what you can, you know, don't have to put yourself out, but help them a little bit if you can. Hey, even kind words help that, you know. Um, passing hope is is a lot more powerful than people think it is. Uh, there's, uh, we all have a force inside of us, a strength, um, you know, we can, uh, do great things with it or we can, we can, uh, just let it go by, you know, time go by and, and not use it. And I would suggest that everybody goes and uses that to make the world better. You know, uh, I, uh, I see people that do too much for others and I see people that don't do enough for others, but either way it's, it's, uh, has its goods and bads, I guess, you know, um, but we should try to help others stay alive, you know, don't, I don't know, talk to people. If you think they're depressed, you think they're going to kill themselves, you know, get them help, you know, or be their help, you know, talk to them and, and try to become friends with them. You know, there's, there's a lot more, uh, We have a lot more to offer this world than we realize. And you might be depressed, wanting to quit, but don't quit. You know, just keep waiting another day. And when that day gets here, wait another day. And when that day gets here, get it, wait another day. And keep doing that. There's, uh, go adopt a cat, go adopt a dog, you know, um, some people are like, oh man, that's why I'm so depressed. I lost mine to cancer. I lost mine to a car wreck, whatever. Because I, out of respect for animals in general, you know, I I adopt more and, and give them, give cats and dogs better lives. You know, obviously I don't have any room for a horse or donkeys and stuff like that or whatever animal. I don't have any other room for anything like that, but I... I do what I can. I do it my, in my circle what I can do. And, uh, you know, we all, if we all focused on something when we were depressed, if you're crashing, don't just look at the ground as you're going down. Don't accept your fate. You can acknowledge, yeah, I'm going to hit the ground. I do it all the time. I'm like, yep, this is going to be a, this one's going to hurt. And, um, but when I get there, I get the hell back up. I stand up. This one was, la was really difficult for me. Um, 
a brother-in-law, he, uh, he died and, uh, it was really difficult for me because I thought, and I, I was doing good. I was lifting and I was eating right. And I was like, man, this, you know, this sucks so bad that he died, you know, cause I'd call him up so many times a year and we'd BS and, and we love to talk and, and he just died, you know, like, um, we didn't have a chance to say goodbye or anything like that. And I know that most people don't have a chance, don't get a chance to, but I crashed about a month later. I started crashing hard. I went to his funeral and, uh, There was a bunch of bad stuff surrounding, um, you know, his, um, his family and, uh, it's not resolved and I'm angry and, uh, I quit working out. I was, uh, I found myself trying to get out of bed. I went to another job. I, I left and uh, went to another job in New Mexico. Uh, my last boss was talking crap, and usually I can deal with people talking crap. I couldn't. He he talked crap, and I and this other little uh, this other little cra- you know crappy human being that's. Uh, it's no good as far as I'm concerned. You know, he's not a good person. He doesn't try to be a good person. <laughs> but he downs people all the time. He's just like the the opposite of what I feel that people should be, you know. But anyway, with all this crap going on, he... Uh, you know, with him dying and stuff like that. And I lost my job. I went to New Mexico for another job. I was, I went to Texas and then to New Mexico, I was gone away from my family for like two weeks. Um, I had a bunch of crazy stuff happen and I knew I had to come back home. So, excuse me. So I came home and, um, I made a couple of my friends mad, you know, cause one of them went out of his way to get me, uh, uh, to get me up there and get the job. Um, I didn't realize how bad my family needed me around and how bad I needed to be around my family. It's not even been six months since uh, Jared died. And um, it was crazy because I got another call from another job and, and it was the same wage. And they're like, we are, and there's, there was better stuff, you know, uh, the best thing about it was it was at home. I was almost home or I can, I'm home almost every single night. Um, I can go weeks by staying home every day. And then some randomly they'll be like, Hey, you know, I need you to go to Colorado. And so I'll have to run fuel out there cause I'm a truck driver. And so I, I, uh, I've decided, you know, I was like, I called him up and said, I'm, I'm coming home. You know, I'm, I got another job offer. And so I left and it made my friend mad. A couple of my other friends are, and a couple of family members are upset at me because I came back and, and, you know, these people are nobody important to me. You know what I mean? Like the, the family members and the, and the friends that have attitudes with me about it. I don't really care. I mean, I'm doing what's best for my family. I mean, these people don't have good relationships with their family or their friends and the ones that are trying to tell me what I need to do with my life, you know, and and they've always been like that. You know, they've always been that person that's, you know, trying to, they can't run their lives, but they want, they want to run everybody else's, you know, they want to manage other people's lives and, and it's just, It's just dumb. But anyway, I come back 
and uh, I didn't realize how bad my wife needed me here. Um, and I felt really dumb, you know, I felt like, why the hell did I leave? You know, cause I got mad at somebody because I was having an issue with, you know, cause I was angry that, that Jared died. So then uh, a couple bosses were, you know, they cut my wage, they cut my wage like four bucks an hour and, you know, changed my job title and then, but expected me to still do the other job. So I was like, no, dude, I'm not doing that. And then they threatened me. And so I told them where to go. I walked and, uh, you know, I wasn't wrong. You know, what, you know, leaving, I, I stood up for myself, you know, but I, at the same time, I, you know, and I went to this other company and yeah, it was the same crap that I dealt with at that same company that I, that I worked for 12 years ago. Management's the same company's the same. It's just a crappy company and they pay you. I, I'm making 50 to a hundred bucks more than I made 12 years ago with the same company. So that's why I left. I was like, you know, I feel like I'm in some kind of negative twilight zone, you know, episode or something. And so I just, I called up my, actually my friend was like, Hey man, you want this job? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I took the job, drove all the way to Texas and, you know, I needed the real, I needed a, a vacation, I guess, you know, even though it wasn't a vacation, um, it was pretty stressful really. Um, but it was a focus It focused me, made me realize what I needed to do in order to keep on my dreams to keep going toward what I originally set out to do. And so, um, I was pushing and pushing and to get to that point and Jared died and my mind was scattered, you know, and, uh, I've still got a lot of family stuff I got to take care of. Then we have a new stress on our plate and it's not, it's not easy. It's, it's really good. It's going to be really difficult. Um, but again, it, I, I believe that it'll be worth it. You know, it's going to be something that is, you know, it's full of smiles and happiness. You know, I mean, there's obviously there's going to be tears on and off throughout your life and, uh, hardships, you know, but that's, you shouldn't measure your life in hardships. You should measure your, your, life and smiles and, you know, rewards as such, you know, something that will keep you going. When, when I would wake up a long time ago, I would go to work and I would, you know, hug my nephews and, uh, and kiss my wife and everything and go hug and kiss her and then go to work and then come back and I would, and we would watch movies and, and we would go work out or we'd go rock climb, whatever day it was. We might go out, out hiking or go riding dune buggies or, or go karts. I mean, up in the hills and, you know, bike ride. I looked forward to the end of the day, the smiles, not, not the strains and the stresses of the, of the work. I did it and I did it the best that I could. But when I shut that, that when I walked out that door, my mind started changing for the, for what made me smile, which was my family. And I think people need to focus on what makes them smile. You know, um, you know, uh, kids and wife and husband, whatever, uh, your pets, you know, uh, I have a huge uh, amount of stuff that I smile for, you know, like I'm always like my cats, my dogs, you know, my nephews and my, my wife, you know, I mean, me and my wife will sit there and lay in bed together and, and pet the cats and stuff. And the dog will try to come in and jump up on the bed. <laughs> She's not getting enough attention, you know, and just, you know, all these things are funny to me, I guess, you know, but it's life is life is a wonderful thing uh a wonderful timeline i mean you only have a certain amount of time to smile and do the things that you're supposed to because eventually you'll die on your own you'll die time takes us out so 
don't worry about the bad events that you that you are part of, the things that you did wrong. Focus on what you can do right and run with that because in the long run you might have caused a bad a bad echo out in the pond, you know. But you can cause a good echo that's bigger than that by doing you know, you might have affected a lot of people with your with this negative effect now change it and do something good and positive and and you'll be surprised at how the world changes for the better um being the best human being that you can be every day is important and uh just um just do me a favor and when you want to give up, just wait one more day. And when that day gets there and you want to give up, wait one more day and keep doing that. Drop down and do some push ups. go for a walk, you know, go do some chin ups. Believe it or not, a little boost of exercise every day will get you feeling a tiny bit better. You might be in a huge hole of depression. But a little bit, you know, goes a long ways. And so you start, eat, you know, you start eating a certain food, you know, and building up that that health in your mind because you're eating the right stuff. You know, um, a lot of people don't realize that if you do eat a lot of meat, um, your depression will, will slowly dwindle. It'll go away. Um, one of the biggest problems is people will jump themselves up with caffeine and sugar and they'll crash excuse me, and then they'll, they won't feel good. So how you beat that is you uh, eat better, exercise often, and surround yourself with good people and good times and uh, more happiness, you know, things like that. If you're, if you're around a bunch of people that are super negative, you know, whatever they are, seek out the other way, you know, seek out the, ple the happiness. I don't mean pleasure. I meant happiness. Um, because pleasure doesn't mean that's happiness. I just mean like, um, like happiness is, you know, you know, is joyful. Like you can, you know, when I come home and play with my cats and my dogs and stuff like that, there's a joy to it. There's a happiness, you know, things like that. You know, it's like some people are like, oh, I, you know, my happiness is, is all about pleasure. I'm going to go sleep with whoever, all these people, and I'm going to go get drunk. It's not really a, a positive, a positive thing. You know what I mean? Like being a, a hedonist is not a positive movement towards the better. And uh, you'll know that eventually in time. It might take you until you're... 50s or 60s but eventually you'll find out that hedonism is not structurally sound and uh, you'll regret a lot of things but anyway keep fighting um, stay strong and motivated remember to be the root in the tree and push through your obstacles break the rocks and break the uh Break these objects, split them out of your way, move through them, be the root. All right, y'all take care.